Okay, so welcome back to part six of Learn Go. In this video, we're going to be going over the if else construct. So I've already gone ahead and uh, pre formatted the file here with package main, import format, and the main function as well. And I'm in a file called if underscore else dot go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to step through some of the primary ways in which to declare if else. The structure should be very familiar to if you're familiar with any if else construct in any other language. So let's just step through a couple. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a variable i. We'll just set it equal to a value of 5. And then what we'll do is we'll have an if else statement here. So we'll have if, let's say i mod 2 is equal to 0, then we'll have the initial if statement. So inside of these braces is what is going to occur if that if statement is triggered. So in that case, we'll just say print line. And then what we'll say is we'll say i is even, because that's what will happen if i mod 2 is equal to 0. And then what we can do here is we can say otherwise, so else. And then inside of these braces here is what is going to happen if the else statement is triggered. And in this case, what we'll do is we'll say format.println i let's say is odd, and we'll have it like that. Let's go ahead and write this, clear the terminal, and then we'll go ahead and run this program. So we'll say go run if else dot go. So in this case, we defined i to be the value five, so five is odd, so this else statement is triggered. So you can also just have a single if statement just hanging out by itself. So for instance, if we define a variable, let's say k is equal to 100, and we can just have one if statement without any corresponding else. We can just say if k is equal to 100, then what we can do is we can say format.print line k, and then we'll just say is 100. We'll go ahead and write that. We should see since we defined k to be 100, the if statement will be triggered, and that will be printed out to the screen. So we can also have, we have if else, we have regular just if, and we also have uh, else if. We can add that into the mix as well. So in Python, that would be elif, E-L-I-F. So that is what you would, uh, that's the equivalent for what will be else if in this case. So let's see an example of how that can be used in Go. So let's use another example. We'll just define a variable j. Let's just set it equal to 25. And we'll say if j is less than 50, strictly less than 50, we'll go ahead and say format.println. And then we'll say uh, j is less than 50. And then let's see what we can do here is we can say else if j is greater than 50 so if this if this happens again open open curly brace close curly brace we can say format dot print line j is greater than 50 and then otherwise if neither of those things are true and this is an integer we're just going to print out in this case print line j is equal to 50. okay so we'll go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and save it run it to the screen. So we define j to be 25, and 25 is less than 50. So the initial if statement is triggered. If we went ahead and define this to be, let's say, 55, so this else if statement will get triggered. So we'll go ahead and run that. So 55 is greater than 50. And that's exactly what we're printing out after this else if statement. So one final thing that's worth pointing out before we end this video is that in Go, there is no such thing as a ternary operator. So a ternary operator in C, C++, Python is denoted by this question mark, and it's given as an expression that kind of looks like this. So this expression is essentially saying, if A is true, give me B, otherwise if A is false, give me C. So this question mark is a ternary operator, and basically this expression is kind of a shorthand for an if-else type of statement. So this is, I'm just going to put a comment here, this is not allowed in Go. So if this was your favorite expression to use, unfortunately you won't be able to use it in Go, and the designers decided to take it out of the language for, or not have it in the language for one reason or another. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. The code, as always, will be available on my GitHub page. You can download that as well. The link in the, it will be in the description. So thanks again for taking the time to watch and have a nice day. Bye.